The Netflix show Disenchantment provides a fresh feminist take on fantasy. Is that whole flying broom thing just an old wives' tale? Plus, there can't be that many opportunities for older women who like to cackle. But where did that come from? Money talks in show business, so how do we get money saying this? What's this weird feeling I don't want to drink away? That's hope. Well, it's important where the money's coming from. It's coming from Netflix. That's like saying banana juice comes from a bottle. Banana juice comes from bananas. People are bananas. I watch TV online, but like streaming services are all super expensive, 10 or 15 bucks a month, and so I can only get one. For TV networks, including internet ones, audience is a product, a commodity. You got to hunt it, grow it, capture it, and feed it. If you're a streaming company and you have no bananas, you've got no juice. Are you paraphrasing the Eileen Mean article, Gendering the Commodity Audience? Yes, but it makes more sense with bananas. Now, you can specialize, going only for those bananas who like expensive shows with nudity. Or, you can be the network that goes for every single banana. Our hands brace for mermaids! Netflix has been forced into a business model that demands continual increase in subscribers. They might be the top streaming service, but they are hemorrhaging licensed content as studios realize they can make more money by pulling their stuff off Netflix and distributing it online themselves. And crucially, among those shows that have left Netflix are big name irreverent animated comedies. Archer, Family Guy, American Dad, Bob's Burgers, The Cleveland Show, Brickleberry, Futurama. Oh, I like all of those. Oh, ever so much. And where have these irreverent animated comedies gone? Hulu and Amazon. That peanut butter on my tail was mine. And the problem is those bandwagon punks can afford to wait the long game. TV is moving online, that much is clear. But how it's gonna keep making money once every banana has already subscribed is anyone's guess. But Hulu and Amazon don't have to worry about that because they got big daddy parent corporations to keep them afloat. Hulu's got the Disney Corporation behind them and Prime Video can ride the rest of Amazon's coattails till the cows come home. But Netflix is just Netflix. And now you get bop kiss. And so to keep the subscriber bananas they already have, Netflix has to provide exclusive content, which it can only do by making it. And making TV costs a bunch of juice, so it has to get more subscribers to pay for that, and each one of those new bananas wants a different kind of show. And so you get brilliant shows like On My Block, Good Morning Call, and Little Things. Which is good diversity on screen, but what kind of banana is Disenchantment going for? I, I like Disenchantment. Well, yes! Netflix is trying to appeal to every demographic, but it can't lose the important one. And so we go back to The Simpsons. The Simpsons, created by and forever associated with Matt Groening, revolutionizes American comedy and creates a new genre and a set of audience bananas to go along with it. That audience makes space for huge commercial successes like Beavis and Butthead, South Park, Family Guy, and Futurama. And Matt Groening becomes a legend. Fast forward. Despacito. Animated satire is a staple of the internet, and Netflix is losing its animated satires left, right, and center. All it's gonna have left is Bojack Horseman and a couple of smaller fry. And here's the genre grandfather, out of nowhere, looking to make a fantasy show. It's not out of nowhere. He's wanted to make this story since he was a kid. If Disenchantment's getting made, Netflix can't say no. They cannot let Hulu or Amazon have the next Simpsons. So you're saying it doesn't matter to Netflix what Disenchantment is about? so long as Netflix is the only one who can stream it. Oh, it matters. They need it to be like The Simpsons and Futurama. That's what the bananas want. <laughs> <laughs> the creepy laughter has to stop before we can have a real conversation. And so is it a wonderful feminist adventure? Only insofar as it's marketable to those bananas, in the same way Queer Eye for the Straight Guy was a marketable version of homosexuality back in 2005. The hills are alive with the sound I of bad footwear. Like... Oh, but you're forgetting Disenchantment stars Abby Jacobson as the voice of Bean. You probably know her from Broad City. Go for Abby. I am not a mom! We thought we knew what we were doing with Bean uh, when we first started, and she came to the part and just added a whole level of feminism. Alpha! Lucy, you fell off a balcony. You came back. Lucy, I thought I pushed you. I mean, we're together again. But nothing can stop us now. So there's a woman playing a strong role in shaping the content. Oh, if you're bringing that up, let's talk about all the animators bringing Bean to life, only 30% of which are women. Why are there so few women in animation? Does that not affect the kind of stories that you get? I'm not the only one talking about this. There is an article. I mean, from all this, it looks as though Matt Groening at least thinks his show is feminist. Oh, I'm sure he does. And maybe it is. But at the end of the day, Disenchantment is on Netflix so that Netflix can keep juicing their bananas and make sure those bananas don't go in search of greener pastures. You have a refreshingly non-standard approach to agriculture. 